Grace be unto you and peace on this holy evening. And welcome to this Christmas Eve virtual broadcast from the First Presbyterian Church of Pasadena. We are delighted to have you worshiping with us this evening. Later in the service, we will have an opportunity to um, light candles and sing together Silent Night, Holy Night. So if you don't now have a candle available, you might want to uh, pause this and go and, and find a candle so that you can participate in that portion of the service if you want to. And now, let us worship God. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Glory to you, Almighty God, for you sent your only begotten Son, that we may have new life. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you became flesh and lived among us, that we might become your people. Glory to you, Holy Spirit, for you direct and rule our lives. Glory to you, Almighty God, and to your Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn is, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
And now, friends, let us bow in prayer. Almighty God, we are so thankful to you for your word, your eternal word that is continually made fresh to us by your Holy Spirit. Bless us this evening with your spirit breathing life into these words that we may hear them in new and powerful ways. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the Gospel of Luke. I'll be reading from the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Let us hear together the word of God to us. In those days, a decree went out for Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It takes less than 2020 vision to know that this year has been a mess. It's been a mess for us as a nation and for us as the planet Earth. It's been a mess on the health front with a pandemic, the likes of which we haven't known for over 100 years. On the economic front, with unemployment and financial strain unmatched in most of our lifetimes. It's been a mess for relationships as we have been forced to learn social distancing as a new normal and to recognize the lingering, smoldering, harmful effects of racism. In politics, as we come to terms with being a divided nation, in a time when we need to pull together as desperately as we ever have, and in just about every other way we might choose to name. 2020 has been a mess. 2020 will be a year that none of us will ever forget. It'll be a year that we'll always look back on to mark a change in our lives, a year that most assuredly will be different from the past before we associated the word corona with a deadly virus. 2020 is a year that's been filled with fear and uncertainty and loud voices and shrill voices and silence. Silent streets, silent skies, silent workplaces. It's been a year of either quieter households, absent visitors and visiting family members, or very cramped quarters as homes have become offices and schoolrooms and rec centers and refuges. 2020 has been a year when we've all learned about new technologies, about using electronics to stay connected in ways we never before could have imagined, like worshiping regularly through this means. We have expanded our vocabularies with new entries like Zoom and Super Spreader and Doom Scrolling 
And we've even learned new bits of molecular biology, like spike proteins and mRNA. What a year it's been. You know, 50 years from now, there will be news stories about those of us who can reflect on what it was like to see the whole world shut down overnight, to see jet airplanes mothballed by the thousands, to see runs on disinfectants and toilet paper, refrigerator trucks parked by hospitals, and children once shielded from too much screen time suddenly going to school by computer. But God has been with us throughout 2020. God has been speeding the efforts of worldwide researchers, blessing the stamina of doctors and nurses and all hospital personnel, fueling the long hours put in by truckers and grocery workers to feed a nation suddenly cut off from regular dining out experiences. In addition to word combinations like aerosol droplets and quad, uh, quarantine pod. Many of us in this strange and difficult year have learned the phrase corona lining, seeing some good that has come out of our shared enduring of 2020. There have been some corona linings. There have been some discoveries that we've made, some things that we can point to that we might not have ever noticed before the time of COVID. We are more cognizant of our interdependence on one another, not just in this country, but all around the world. No longer can a virus be assumed to be limited to just a small geographic pocket. The Apostle Paul's point has been made abundantly clear. When one suffers, we all suffer. Our time of shared hardship around the world has also clarified the distinction between our wants and our needs. And it's pointed out what truly is important. For many of us, our list of wants is no longer as lengthy as it was before COVID. What matters most is the health and safety of those we love and the assurance that through the rigors of testing or the anguish of being separated from hospitalized loved ones or the annoyance of face masks or the disappointment of gatherings postponed or canceled, we have the assurance that God is with us. Emmanuel, that means God with us. It's what we celebrate tonight. It's what we lean on in trying times. It's what gives us comfort and strength day in and day out. God with us, Emmanuel. This is the good news that the angel brought so long ago. And it is the good news that we remember tonight. So friends, do not be afraid. There is good news of great joy for all people Born for us this day in the city of David is a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Never will we walk alone. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. And now, friends, let us bow together in prayer. Let us pray. On this holiest of nights, O God, we bow before you with thanks and praise in awe that we are able to witness the tender gift of your own son who comes to us in the humble form of an infant child to experience the breadth of human life, to lift us from darkness into the light, to save us from ourselves and open the way for us to be in perfect communion with you and one another. On this holiest of nights, when the whole world pauses and gets a bit quieter, on this night when even the hardest heart becomes a bit softer and our willingness to forgive and show love grows a bit stronger, take us, 
Hold us. Shape us. Love us into the people you want us to be in the days ahead. People made in your image to show love and compassion, to welcome the stranger and feed the hungry, to comfort the grieving and encourage the child, to extend kindness to the downtrodden and to seek justice for the oppressed. Use us to usher in your reign when you will wipe every tear from our eyes, when mourning, crying, and pain will be no more, and all the brokenness of this world will be re repaired. O oh God, the holiness of this night does not soften the needs of the world. We pray for the thousands of people who are hospitalized this very night, for the health care workers who are even now tending to their needs, for first responders who are away from their families and looking out for the safety of us all. We pray for those who are forced to be apart from those they love, for families who are mourning the loss of loved ones, for those who know this time of comfort and joy is a time of emptiness and loneliness. Shine the light of your love into every dark corner of need. Open our eyes to possibilities that always are present in you and stir our creative outreach to those well beyond our usual circles of care. Be with those who are hungry, those without a safe place to call home, those who see the future filled only with the threat of eviction, bankruptcy, or despair. Work through us to give them strength and courage to persevere. Help us meet needs in ways we might be unable to imagine, ways that testify to your grace and your promise for a better tomorrow. We rejoice, O oh God, for those who have found new meaning in serving others, those who have heard your clarion call to faith in powerful ways through the days we have endured and who face the new year with renewed energy to serve and glorify you. Make clear their path and fill them with the joy that can come only from knowing your encouragement and presence. On this night when we treasure signs of your light shining in the darkness, and in the days to come, keep the flickering beauty of your everlasting light strong within us that we may continue to walk in your way, to know your steady presence, and to trust that nothing can overcome your light. Nurture the gift of your spirit within us each one and magnify our capacity to show love and grace as modeled for us in Christ Jesus. All these prayers we make in his name, one born infant holy, infant lowly, one who grew to teach and preach and give himself for us, the one we know as risen Lord and the Prince of Peace. We unite our voices in the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, we celebrate the birth of Christ. We celebrate the light of God coming into our world. We celebrate God with us, Emmanuel. Light your candle, hold them high, as together we sing Silent Night.
And now, friends, take the light of Christ into the world. Along with it, bear peace. Show love to all and embody grace. Know the presence of God, Emmanuel. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those whom you love, both this day and forevermore. Amen.